Hello everyone. Um, this is the second video of uh, using the Applet LP Assistant. In this video, I will go through um, the second example and uh, to show you how to set it up in this applet and how to solve it. Okay, so let's get started. And this is the um, second example we had in the class video. And uh, we have, um, you know that, um, so you need to start from the canonical form, which um, has six um, variables. So we have only three here. So let's see, you can go to Tableau, you see add regular variable. Now you have four and then you need one more. You add another one, you have five and add one more. Now I have six variables. I also know that I have um, three constraints. So let's do that. Add a constraint. So we have one more constraint. Okay. So all this shall be done in the edit mode. Okay. Now um, let's punch in the numbers. So I know that um, the first equation, I have coefficient three, the next one, two, zero, one, zero, zero, and 60. That's the first equation. And the basic variable here is x4. And let me choose that. That's x4. And then for the second equation, I have negative 1, 1, 4, 0, 1 here, and 10. Right? And you see that x5 is the basic variable. Yes, so let's put that in, x5. Okay, and the third one, let's finish this up. Have two here, and negative two, and five, zero, zero, one, and the final one is 50. Okay, and then we see that x6 here is the basic variable, so let's put that in. And then the objective function, I have negative 2, mm -hmm. negative 3, negative 3. Okay, and the rest is all 0. Okay, so that's the starting point. So we now imported the problem and then we can start the pivoting process. Now I change the mode into pivot. Okay, so in order to do the pivoting process, we check these coefficients, try to locate negative ones, okay? And we see that I, all of them are negative. So which one do I choose? Well, the guideline says pick the one that's most negative. So negative three is more negative than negative two. And there are two of them, so I just pick one. So let's say I picked this one. And then I need to check this column here and uh, to see if there are positive coefficients. And I see there are two of them, the first and the second one. And then I need to decide which one of them I should choose. So let's see if I hover over the number two here, I see the ratio is 30. If I hover over one, I see the ratio is 10. So 10 is less than 30. So I should choose this as my pivoting point. Okay. So I'm going to click on that. See, I click on it. Okay. And then the program automatically computes the pivoting process for me. And now I see that this becomes one and that's a basic variable and x5 is no longer. It's being replaced. And the other two equations have the same basic variable, but they are numbers are changed because the pivoting process make this zero and make this zero. And it also makes the zero for the objective function here. Okay. And then let's look at the objective function, the coefficients. Do I spot a negative number? Yes. Negative five here is negative. So sorry about that, that email notification. I should have turned it off. Okay, so this is negative five, which means I need to look at this column and figure out where to pivot. 
right? So um, I see that um, there's only one term that's positive, which is 5 here. So, well, you can check the ratio. It's 8, but that's the only candidate. So that's where I will pivot. Oh, let me click on that one. I click on it. Okay, so here the table gets longer. I could either make the screen longer or I can scroll down. If I scroll down and I see the following. So after pivoting, now x1 is a basic variable, replacing x4, x2, x6 unchanged, but these equations are changed such that these two column, uh, the, these two number in the two columns are zero. And also the right hand side is changed. These numbers are adjusted because you perform the pivoting. Also for the objective function, this becomes zero because you pivoted. And then I have new coefficient and I have a new value here. Okay, so now let's look at um, should we terminate the process or shall we go further? Well, you can see that the coefficients here, Z 1, 1, 1. Do I see any negative ones? No. Nope. So what does that mean? Well, that means the minimum is reached. We can apply theorem O and terminate the process. Okay, so once there are no negative numbers here, you terminate the process and you can say that the minimum value for the objective function will be negative 70, so the negative of this number, and it is attained at the solution point when x1 is 8, x2 is 18, x6 is 70, and all the others, x3, x4, x5, the non-basic variables, they are 0. Okay? So, that's it. And uh, again, as I said before, you can decide to save this problem or um, print this problem, the PDF of the output, to submit in the homework if, you, if this shall be a homework problem that you are working at. Okay? Hope uh, this is useful and um, good luck and have fun playing with the LP Assistant. And I'll see you again in the next video.